This video covers PowerSDR 2.7.2 KE99S revision 10.11.16.T10 and I've added a new feature automatic antenna control to the previous feature the beam heading and you can see on the screen right here I've got a, a DX spot here it's showing that I'd have to point my antenna uh, 79 degrees now if I open up the spotter window you can see the spots and the beam headings here based on your latitude and longitude. Now, if you were to click on the station, uh, it takes you to the frequency, uh, and, that, and that's all it does. Now, I've added a feature where you click over here, and not only will it take you to the frequency, but it'll transmit that beam heading 79 degrees to DDU Till, and then DDU Till will parse that out and send it to your rotor control and the way it does that is we go to setup and then the cat control here is now there's something down here uh, if I disable it I can scan through all the COM port pairs that I've got and I pick one that'll link back to DDU till this is also linking back to DDU till uh, I picked one half of a COM port pair in this case COM2 which is paired with COM3 and I got VSP manager here to make a whole bunch of COM port pairs they're virtual port pairs and you can see 2 and 3 so 2 is connected to PowerSDR, 3 is connected to DDUtil and in that way I can run things like Ham Radio Deluxe and FL Digi all simultaneously and then they just uh, round robin COM port uh, data back to power SDR so they multiplex it um, so DDU till is loaded up here you have to leave it minimized and then what you do is you set up DDU till uh, in this case <clears throat> for the cat port you put in the other half under the legacy because we're dealing with uh, power SDR and that links it up but not the rotor control the rotor control uh, is in a different spot first you go to antenna rotor and you would put in the COM port, a real COM port that links back to one of your rotor controls. And you can have up to three rotors, so you'd have three different real COM ports linking back. Once you enable that, that enables this port here, and you'd put in the other half of this port. In this case, I've got COM16 is the other half of the 17. You enable it. These boxes will light up, allowing you to put in the other half of the COM port. So I put in COM port 16, and now what will happen is when I send the beam heading, in that case 79 degrees, it goes from 17 to 16, and then it goes over to here, and then this passes it along to whatever rotor you have selected uh, in this database, and uh, it turns your antenna. So there's two ways. I showed you one in the DX spotting. Uh, like I said, if I click on any of these lines here, it not only takes me to the frequency and the mode and the split and all that, but if I click over in this column, it'll actually then send that command to move the beam heading. So if I click over here uh, to the left of that, it won't. It just simply moves the frequency without moving the antenna. Over here, it'll frequency and antenna. But the other way to do it too is when I'm up here, you remember if I click <clears throat> on the call sign just to keep power SDR in focus and I hit the control button that opens up uh, the QRZ page so <clears throat> you know I click on uh, click on the call control opens up that QRZ page but uh, if you click I, I changed it now so if you click <clears throat> on most of the left of the call it'll open up the QRZ page but if you click on the last letter of their call focus on that and on the last letter you hit the control key that just sends the antenna rotor command so now it's going to point to wherever W2XL happens to be uh, you know the beam heading wise that's another way of, of doing it but the preferred way is just simply pick one of these um, you know, pick one of the lines and then when you decide, okay, that's fine, I want to point my antenna, then just click over there, left click again, and then uh, that'll start the antenna pointing procedure. And that's it.